Hey guys, in this lesson I'm going to show you some compound interest questions. So in the first question, it says Olivia invests £20,000 for four years in a savings account. She gets 3% per annum compound interest. Per annum just means each year, okay? Calculate the total amount of interest she gets after four years. So as we do this question, I'm just going to show you the formula over here to work out compound interest. So to work out the compound interest, we need to take the value P. This is the principal amount of money. So the amount of money that Olivia started with in the first place, so 20,000 pounds. Then what we need to do is multiply this number P by one plus the rate of interest, so in this case 3%, but written in its, in its fraction form, okay? So instead of writing 3%, I'm going to write 3 out of 100, okay, which is the same thing as 3%, but it will be useful later on to write this in its fraction form. Then you need to raise the bracket to T, okay? This is time, so in this case the number of years is 4, so we raise it to the power of 4. Now, if you were to put this into your calculator, it would give you the total amount of money that Olivia has in the savings account after the four years. But to work out the compound interest, okay, so the total amount of compound interest, we have to remember to subtract P, the principal amount, the amount of money that she started with in the first place, so 20,000. So now it's complete, okay? We've put all the information into the formula. If you put this into the calculator, you should get 2510.1762. So this is an exact answer, and it doesn't say anything about rounding in this question. So you can leave your answer just like this, and you'll get full marks. However, if the question had said, round your answer to um, the nearest pound, that would mean you don't want any decimal numbers, okay? No numbers after the decimal point. And because this number one is smaller than five, it wouldn't round this zero up. So your answer would just be 2,510 pounds. If the question had said round to the nearest pence, okay? That would mean you need to round your answer to two decimal places, okay? That just means you need to have two numbers after the decimal point. And because the third number after the decimal is five or bigger than five, it means this number rounds up one to the number eight. So in the next question, Maxime invests $2,500 for three and a half years in a savings account. He gets 4.5% per annum compound interest. How much does Maxime have at the end of the three and a half years? Round your answer to the nearest dollar. So we're not working out the compound interest in this question. We have to work out the total amount of money that Maxime has after the investment, okay? So after three and a half years. So maybe you remember in the first question, I explained to you how you work out the total amount of money. It's this part of the formula, okay? So all of the first part, but you don't subtract the principal amount, okay? So I'm going to take P, the principal amount of money, $2,500. And then we need to multiply this by 1 plus the rate of interest in its fraction form. So it's 4.5%. So it would be 1 plus 4.5 over 100. Okay. So it's just the numerator of that fraction that changes to 4.5. Then the time in years for this question is 3.5. So that's the same as 3. after the three and a half years. So when you put that in the calculator, you should get 2,916.3995 and so on. And because the question says round your answer to the nearest dollar, we don't want any numbers after the decimal point. So since this number three is smaller than five, it doesn't round the number six up. So we're just left with $2,916. In the next question, Jason invests £5,600. He gets 2% per annum compound interest. And then after N years, Jason has 
6,061 pounds, 62 pence. Work out the value of N. So we have to work out how many years Jason invested his money. So, like in the previous question, I want to use this version of the formula, okay? Remember I said earlier, to work out compound interest, you have to calculate this. But if you want to work out the total amount of money after the investment, it's just the first part of the formula without the subtracting of the principal amount at the end, okay? So I've just rewritten that down here just to make things a little bit clearer. So P in this question, the principal amount, is 5,600. Then if I change the rate of interest in this question, the letter R becomes the number 2, okay? So inside the brackets, we've got 1 plus 2 over 100. Now T is just the number of years, N, that we're trying to work out. So in this question, I'm just going to use a method called trial, trial and error, okay? It's just um, sensible guesswork. So we're going to choose a sensible value of N for the number of years to see if it gives us the total amount of money that Jason had after the investment. So let's start with N is 3. Okay, so see what happens when uh, we change this number here to the number 3. So if you put this in the calculator, 5,600 multiplied by 1 plus 2 over 100 cubed, okay, you should get 5,942.7648. So hopefully you can see that that number is too small. Jason had this much money, okay, after his investment, not this amount here. So because this is too small, we need to increase the number of years, okay? We need to change this number, okay? So increase it. So let's try when n is equal to 4. So see what happens when Jason invests the money for 4 years. Okay, so this time, if you put it in the calculator, you should get exactly what you need. Okay, so if you put the same thing in the calculator for changing the power to 4, you should get 6,061.62. Okay, so because that is the same total amount of money given in the question, we know that Jason invested his money for 4 years. So n is equal to 4. In the next question, Michelle invests $760 for 7 years at R% percent per annum compound interest. Michelle gets $309.40 compound interest after the 7 years. Find the value of R. So we're trying to work out the rate of interest in this question. So what you need to do is take all the bits of different information given in the question and substitute them into the formula for compound interest. So compound interest in this question is here. So start by writing that down first. And this is equal to the principal amount, so P, the start amount of money, 760. And then inside the brackets, this stays the same. 1 plus R over 100, because R is what we're trying to work out. Okay, so that one stays the same. T is time in the number of years, so in this question it's 7. And then not forgetting to subtract P, the principal amount, at the end, so minus 760. So we need to solve this equation to work out the value of R. So if you're uh, in need of a bit of um, practice on solving equations, I do have some other lessons that you might find useful, okay, before you have a go at something like this. What you need to do first is add 760 to both sides of the equation. So on the left hand side, it becomes 1069.4. On the right hand side, if you just add the number 760, that just becomes zero, okay? They cancel each other out. The opposite of multiplying by 760 is dividing. So you must divide both sides by 760. Okay, so you can just leave it like that as a fraction for the moment. When you divide the right-hand side by 760, you just get 1. Okay, remember, whenever you divide something by itself, you get 1. So we now have 1 plus R over 100 to the power of 7. Okay, so can you see we're getting closer to finding the value of R. 
Now, the opposite of raising something to the power of seven is finding the seventh root. Okay, so you need to find the seventh root of this fraction here. Okay, so you can just write it down. You don't need to put it into the calculator just yet. You can wait until the end. When you find the seventh root of this, it just cancels, okay? So it's always cancelling on the right-hand side of the equation as we reverse all the operations around the letter R. Okay, so now we've got 1 plus R over 100. Next, the opposite of adding 1 is to subtract 1. Okay, so you need to subtract 1 on both sides of the equation. So on the left-hand side, just make sure when you subtract 1, it's not inside that... Um, root okay is outside if you subtract one on the right hand side that just goes to zero and maybe you can see what the last step is the opposite of dividing by 100 is to multiply by 100 so you need to multiply everything that you've written down so far by 100 so because we're multiplying everything by 100 it's a good idea to put that all in brackets and when you multiply the right-hand side by 100, this just cancels, and you're left with R. So you need to put all of that inside the calculator, and you should find it equals 5. So the rate of interest in this question is 5. Okay, in this question, Jessica invests P euros for 5 years. The rate of interest per annum is 4%. If Jessica has 5,837.16 euros after the five years, how much money did Jessica invest? Round your answer to two decimal places. So we're trying to work out the principal amount, okay? P euros, how much money Jessica invested in the first place. We also know the total amount of money that Jessica has after the five years, okay? So I'm going to use this version of the formula, okay, to work out the total amount of money rather than the compound interest. So the formula without the subtraction of the principal amount. So I'm going to start by writing down the total amount of money, so 5,837.16, and that is equal to P, the principal amount, which we don't yet know, and then inside the brackets, 1 plus the rate of interest, which here is 4, so 4 over 100, raised to the power of years, which is 5 in this question. So we have to solve this equation to work out the value of P. Now this is quite a straightforward equation to solve. P is being multiplied by all of this. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So all you need to do is divide the left-hand side of the equation by 1 plus 4 over 100, all raised to the power of 5. And when you do that, you get 4,797.72003. And remember, we need to round in this question to two decimal places. So that just means you need to have two numbers after the decimal point. So if you check the third digit after the decimal point, zero is smaller than five, so it doesn't round this number up. So we're just left with 4,797.72 euros. Okay, in this question, Annie invests P pounds for three years at a rate of 6% per annum compound interest. Annie accumulates 3,400 pounds in compound interest after the three years. Find P. So we're trying to work out the principal amount, P, okay, the amount of money that Annie invested in the first place. So what you need to do is start by substituting all the bits of information given in the question into the formula for compound interest. So start by writing down the compound interest, so 3,400. Now this is equal to P, the principal amount, and because we don't know what this is yet, you just write P. Then we can change the letter R to 6, okay? Because the rate of interest in this question is 6%. T, the time in years, 
is 3. Okay, so this is raised to the power of 3. And then not forgetting, you need to subtract the principal amount P because this is the compound interest. So next we have to solve this equation, we have to work out the value of P. And because we've got more than one value here of P, we have to factorise the right-hand side of this equation. So if I take out the common factor P on the right-hand side, I have to open an extra set of brackets. This is just being multiplied by P, okay? So I'm just going to write that as it was before. To get negative P... I need to multiply P by negative 1. Okay, P multiplied by negative 1 gives me negative P. Okay, so I factorise the right-hand side of this equation. Okay, it's the same thing. I've just isolated this value of P so that I can solve the equation. If you're not sure about factorising, I do have some other lessons on that. So um, you might find that useful to go and check that out. Then there's one more step. P is being multiplied by everything inside these brackets. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So you have to divide your equation by everything in those brackets. So 1 plus 6 over 100 all cubed minus 1. And then when you divide the right-hand side by itself, you just get 1, 1P. One okay. So by putting that into your calculator you're working out the principal amount, okay, the value of P. So when you put all of that in your calculator, and be careful to make sure you close those brackets or you might get an error on your calculator, you should get 17,799.55606, okay? I hope that you found my lesson on compound interest helpful. I do have another lesson on simple interest if you want to see that one. And soon I will do a new lesson using exam questions. So keep a lookout for that.